So I've ordered the rest of the hardware that I need to install this DC to DC charger. And it's kind of a, in a way good that I ended up not being able to install it uh, quickly as I thought I would because I've gotten a lot of questions. Actually, a lot of people have told me stuff I didn't know, uh, Facebook groups and stuff. I'm not really in those groups. So they told me some information. I reached out to Renogy, got some uh, answers, and uh, it's been actually uh, a pretty good learning experience. So um, before I install it, I want to talk about some stuff that I noticed in the manual, which I thought was a little odd. And seeing as there's people here that obviously know a lot more than me about um, uh, electronics to have more experience than I do in, with uh, DC to DC chargers and things like that. I wanted to kind of pose some questions to you at the same time as I show you, because there's some things in here that I find are just a bit odd. So let me show you what I mean. So starting with here, actually the here we go. Okay, so you can see that it comes with some uh, lugs. So they're 516s M8 terminals. Okay, keep that in mind. Then when we get here, keep this in mind, okay? I, I don't think it's coincidental that this is a black wire, okay? So it shows the M8 that it comes with, M8 516 terminals being used on the black cable, okay? Let's keep that in mind. And then it shows, you know, how to install it. Now, here's where it starts to get odd. Because this is all 10 gauge, okay? So starting with the auxiliary battery, they want you to use 6 gauge. But not just 6 gauge on the red, 6 gauge on the black side also. Now, then it tells you to use 3 8 inch M10 connectors, but it doesn't say to use them here. I don't know if that's inferred or if you're supposed to use the M8 and the M10 on here. This fuse I did order and I ordered the Renogy one. It's not in yet, so I'll find out if the M10 or the M8 what fits or what doesn't on this fuse. But keep this in mind, okay? 60, 60 amp fuse here. Then we go here. Um, this, they make you do your own little math. Um, I calculated mine to uh, 30 amp, and again, I bought the, uh, the Renogy, or it's either Renogy or Bouge RV, I don't remember which one, but uh, it was a 30 amp. So I, I may try some different uh, strength fuses, but I got the 30 amp. But look at this, four gauge solar panel extension wire and this little uh, asterisk here says that it's available on Renogy.com. Well, they don't have four gauge extensions, which would be pretty big. What they have is 10 gauge and everybody seems to sell a 10 gauge. I, I looked all over Renogy.com, could not find a four gauge. So that may just be a typo. But I got the 10 gauge ones because that's all they had. I didn't see any indication that there was anything else. And I'm going with what they say in here. I'm, I'm gonna stick to what they say. I bought everything they tell me to buy here so that you know we can kind of all learn together. And then if you look at the actual diagram here, right? Here's where I start to have a, a concern. Now, let me let me keep going a little bit. Now, when you go to the starter battery, which is where a lot of the juice comes from, right? You're gonna get four, or they're, they're asking for four gauge, and again, M10 connectors. Four gauge, now, again, since I don't have everything in yet, I'll find out if I can get the M10 and the M8 to both fit on, on this and then uh, on the fuse, because I don't know what size these uh, bolts are here. This is a 100 amp fuse. That's what they recommend. I bought the one from Renogy. Here's where I start to get a little concerned. If you look on this diagram, right? I mean, they do kind of a hack job to connect it. I, I would do a little bit better than that. But this four gauge 
and this 100 amp fuse is just connected to a 10 gauge wire. Now, I looked up the wire chart, so I have an idea in mind, but I want you guys to tell me what you think will pop first, a 100 amp fuse or a 10 gauge section of wire. It is a fairly short run, okay? But just looking at the numbers for 10 gauge, I, I just don't know if that's the safest thing to connect a 100 amp fuse in line and then just connect it to a 10 gauge because the, the thinnest wire is gonna become your fuse, right? So I, I'm wondering what's gonna melt first if there's ever a high draw through it. Is it gonna be the section of wire or is it actually gonna pop the fuse first? I don't know, I'm not 100% convinced that that 100 amp fuse is gonna pop first, but maybe you guys can tell me something that I, I hadn't thought of. Um, that just seems like a lot of juice, especially if you're gonna need a four gauge and then you're just gonna connect it right to a 10 gauge. I mean, it, I don't really know the point of having four gauge if you have a 10 gauge section of wire that's gonna burn first before um, you know, the four gauge has a chance to really kick in, but maybe there just isn't that much amperage running through here. Although I did look up, like I said, the max current draw on a 10 gauge wire for this length. Um, I'm going to kind of keep that to myself because I, I want to see if you guys come up with the same numbers. So let me know. And I think that's kind of it. Yeah, so those are the things that I was really concerned about is that they ask for such a big wire, but then they just connect it to a thinner wire anyways. And then that they make mistakes like this, um, asking for a four gauge when there is no four gauge. A four gauge is a fairly big wire. I've never seen a four gauge ex extension. They may be out there, but I just, I, I couldn't find one. I looked for different brands, couldn't find one. Um, so I'm wondering if I should maybe look again or just use the ones that I ordered, which are 10 gauge, which seems to be kind of the norm. So let me know what you guys think about this. I'm a little hesitant at this point to install it, especially since I have um, dual alternators pushing out quite a bit of juice. I don't know what's going to come out of the battery. I, I should have a, an amp meter that I'm going to... Um, to test the, the cabling and all that first to see how much juice is actually coming out of that that battery before I hook anything else up to it. Because I got two alternators, I think it's 230 amps coming off those alternators. Um, I don't know what the, all, what the battery's pushing out. But let me know what you guys think. And I hope I'm wrong and I hope you guys point something out and tell me why I'm wrong, but I just I just don't know at this point, um, if there's something I'm missing. So thanks again for watching and let me know what you guys think about it.